Hey guys, what's up? Nick here once again, and today we're going to be doing a full unboxing and first impressions of the Galaxy S23 Ultra made by Samsung. So let's get right into it. As you can see, we do have a leather case and the S View wallet case that both came free with pre-ordering the S23 Ultra. So I have to give props to Samsung once again for having an amazing trade-in program through their website. And I was able to get a special color as well, which is this sky blue. Now the device I've been using for the past few months actually has been the Fold 4, which I've absolutely loved this phone. I don't really have any issues with it. The inner screen still works great and looks great. Uh, obviously I have some grime on it from just use, <laughs> some dirt and dust and stuff, but otherwise everything works flawlessly. I don't really have any issues with it. My only real problem, if I was to nitpick, would be that the battery life isn't as good as I'd want it to be. It's still more than capable, and I still can get a full day out of it pretty much with no problem. But if I do have a very heavy usage day, or if I'm on a trip or whatnot, I do end up having to charge it roughly around 8 o'clock at night before I can get to bed, which is a problem. Now, I've heard nothing but good things about the battery life with the S23, Ultra and of course the S22 Ultra from last year's model, both were amazing with battery life. So I'm very excited to see how this phone will compare to the Fold series. Obviously it's going to be a smaller display than the inner display of the Fold, but if I'm going to be honest with you guys, I normally use just my front display 80 to 90% of the time. It's very rare that I actually take two hands to open up to the main display to do something. Yes, it's come in handy many times with looking up recipes and copying and pasting text and stuff like that and looking at YouTube content. But for the most part, I usually just use the front display. So going from this display to the Ultra is going to be a huge difference. So I'm excited to see that. And of course, we will be unboxing these cases as well. And I'll give you my opinions on which one I think you should go with. Probably I'm going to go with the leather case because I've never been a huge fan of the flip cases, but I figured it was free. I'll give it a try for the video. Why not? Also, I do wish they had more color choices for the cases because I would love this sky blue color to shine through. And sadly, these will cover that up. But without further ado, let's get to it. The box, once again, is super small. Nothing to write home about. And I think it only comes with the phone. Uh, let's, let's see. So it comes with the phone and S Pen, a SIM ejection pin, USB-C to USB-C cable, and a quick start guide. So once again, no charging brick in the box, which is a bummer. When you're paying $1,000 plus for a phone, I don't understand why they don't come with that anymore. But hey, I'm not the one making the phone, so I'm not the one making the decisions. So with that, let's get the phone unboxed here. Let's put the cases to the side, and we will start cutting these pieces of tape here. All right, and I believe this should just slide out just like that. Oh, there she is. We do have a cover on it, it looks like. So we'll lift that off. Wow. It's a very, like, baby sky blue. It's a lot lighter in person than I thought it was going to be, but honestly, not a real big problem. It kind of even has a white sheen to it. On the camera, it looks a lot whiter than it does in person. In person, I do see a lot more of the shade of blue. But even looking at the box, you can tell it's supposed to be a little bit darker than it is. So, yeah, very pretty, though. Not going to lie, it's a very beautiful phone. We'll lift that out here. There she is. Side profile. Then we have the front with the screen protector on it right now. And of course, being that it's glass on the front and back, it's going to be a fingerprint magnet whether we like it or not. So I'm going to slap a case on it right away, of course. But I just wanted to go around the peripherals for you guys before we do that. It was a pretty clean phone overall. There's not really too much going on except for the power on the right side here and the volume rocker. I don't know what that is. Maybe it's an antenna, more than likely. And then on the bottom, we, of course, have the S Pen slot, speaker, microphones, and then the... Uh, I'm assuming that's a SIM tray. No expandable storage on this guy, sadly. Nothing on the left side and then on the top just a microphone so yeah nothing too crazy let's put the phone to the side just for a second here and see what else is in the box which okay looks like it's in here but obviously it's really not going to be much as we've already come to know so we got the quick start guide some ejection and a very small USB-C cable. I have a million of these laying around the house now from everything comes with these little guys. So it's probably about like a two and a half, three foot cable. 
pretty short and it is USB-C, USB-C, which does support the fastest charging available, but most people probably are not going to use this because it's so damn short. So yeah, if I was to get two wishes granted for new phones in the future, bring back the charging bricks and give us longer, way longer USB-C cables. All right, so let's get these pieces of plastic off here. They're protecting stuff. Ooh, that didn't sound good. <laughs> Usually it's a nice little tear, but that, that did not sound good, but very beautiful. Let's turn it on and see if we have any juice in it. Oh, there we go. I was gonna say, it probably doesn't have any juice in it being it's kind of cold out. But we're good, it is booting up. And I don't think there is anything on the back for protecting. Samsung does like to put a piece of plastic around the borders. So I'm gonna have to get that off as well. Yeah, it's going to take way too long to do on screen, so I'll just do that off camera. But there we go. We have it booted up, so I'm going to get this all set up. I'm going to transfer everything from my old phone, and then uh, we will be back and we'll test out the cases. Alrighty, through the power of editing, we are back uh, roughly three hours later since unboxing the phone and taking a look at it. I was able to get all of the plastic trim off of the phone that I fully set up with my, all of my accounts. I got all my apps on there and I got it set up the way I want it to be. So let's take a look at the phone first and then we'll get into the unboxing and testing out of these cases. So this is a fingerprint magnet, but I did notice that the back has a kind of frosted coating to it. So it does help not show the fingerprints quite as much as like a regular just glass back. So if you were to rock this with no case at all, thankfully you won't have any issues there. But obviously you do have the cameras that protrude a little bit out of the back. So sadly they will be, you know, at the discretion of falls. Or if you were to lay it on a table, it could scratch the lenses pretty easily. So I still would highly recommend a case. Now I know some people don't even like cases and they like to use D-brand skins and stuff like that. I still don't think that would work really well with this phone because of how much these cameras protrude out of the back. Uh, also, it's kind of annoying laying it on a table and it does wobble because of the back uh, camera sticking out only out of one side, which is kind of why I wish they would go back to just having the cameras in the middle. It made more sense, especially if you didn't want to rock it with a case. But with that being said, we're going to unlock the phone here and I'm just going to show you a quick little demonstration of how it looks, how it runs. And this thing is buttery smooth as predicted. It's 120 hertz display. It's quad HD, so it's not fully 4K, it's more like 2K quality, and you can change it to 1080p or lower if you would like to preserve battery life. But again, the battery life is probably one of the biggest features of this phone, so honestly, treat yourself at that point. Just put it at the highest it can go to use the full advantage of what this screen can do, because if you don't, I mean, at that point, why are you paying a thousand plus dollars for a device? So as you can see, I transferred everything from my Fold 4. I was able to get all my apps the way I wanted to, all my widgets and everything in the right places. I like to keep everything pretty organized. I know this might look cluttered to some people, but I just like having things in folders. It's ready, it's easy, and it's super organized. But yeah, otherwise this is the way I like it and it runs really fluid. I haven't had any issues with any apps not loading correctly or anything like that. Uh, it's a gorgeous device. And of course we do have the S Pen, which is built in. My only gripe with this is I wish the S Pen was the color of the device itself. I'm kind of bummed it's a black S Pen, it's the regular one, but all in all, it's still got the cool Bluetooth features, so you can use this as a shutter button if you are away from the phone, if you want to take like a group selfie or something, which is pretty cool. And of course, you have all these built-in applications, create note, view notes, smart select, screen write, live messages, AR doodle, translate, pen up, all that good stuff that we're known for or known to see on these Note series or on the Ultra series now is what they like to call it. But yeah, the S Pen's pretty cool. I don't ever really use it, to be honest with you. From time to time, I might, like if I'm playing Jackbox or something funny like that, I will whip out the S Pen. But mostly, I don't really use it. But it is cool that it's still included. I know a lot of people do love the S Pen and use it to this day. Uh, and it works, you know, just like it should, very flawlessly. And you do have the button on here, too, to open those apps on the go whenever you need to pretty easily, just like that. But yeah, S Pen's pretty cool, works great. I haven't had any issues with it. But again, this is not a full review. I will be making a full video review in the, in the next coming months. As you all know, or you might not know if you're new to the channel, I'd like to test out these phones for quite a while before doing a full review. It's not like a one or two week review. I want to use this as my daily driver for at least a month. That's my minimum. Uh, but sometimes it's longer than that. So whenever the review comes out, that's when it will. But yeah, phone runs great. It looks beautiful. The screen is gorgeous. It's ginormous, especially coming from the fold here. You can see just side by side how much bigger this display is 
uh, is it better quality? I think technically it is higher resolution than the front display on the Fold 4, but in terms of like just in-person viewing, not really that big of a difference. Both produce a very high quality image, very high resolution, and they're both pretty bright. I don't know if these are at their highest brightnesses. Let's see, just to get a quick example of the differences between their brightness levels. These are both max brightness right now. You can see they're pretty neck and neck. Honestly, I think they're about the same. Even in person, uh, they look identical. I could not tell the difference. And the Fold 4, I never had any issues with outdoor visibility. So I don't think I'm gonna have any issues with the Ultra. So that being said, yeah, screens are by far probably the best features of Samsung devices. And the Ultra is no slouch. So with that, let's jump into the cases. I know some people are pretty excited about these. Uh, again, I just got them because they're free with the phone with the trade-in. But that being said, I never really purchase Samsung or really any name brand cases. I usually always get them off of Amazon uh, for cheaper, you know, 12 bucks, the most I ever pay for cases. But that being said, we're gonna go into the wallet case first. I think this is gonna be probably the more popular choice for most people get the knife out here and let's cut this baby open there we go nothing else in the box there got some documentation all right and we got the case itself a little protector inside there so inside it actually has a nice like felt feeling in there that's actually really nice. It's almost velvet, I guess. You can tell it's got some really rigid edges, so it's going to stay in place really nicely. It's got cutouts for all the cameras. It's got some nice protection. I'm not going to lie. I like that it, that the buttons are even covered, too. Nice cutouts all around. And then we got, of course, full protection for the left side of the device. Mic cut out in the top. And we do have a card slot here, too. So it is a wallet. It's pretty cool. And then, of course, it's the S-View. So you have the little cutout there for... The screen and this should automatically detect it once we install it so let's uh give it a try here i think we just press it in the corners all right look at that instantly that's pretty cool i actually really like that now i don't think yeah i i believe if you turn the uh always on display on you will see the clock there at all times no matter what uh, but if you just want to quickly see the clock, you hit the power button. I believe you can also double tap. Let's see. Yes, you can also double tap. And it will show little icons for if you have any notifications as well. And of course, if you flip it open, it goes right to the main display as well. So pretty cool. I like that. You know, this is a quick little view for your uh, a clock, I guess, and your battery life. Now, already I am noticing something, though. There's no magnets. I kind of wish this had magnets so it, would, it wouldn't just flop open. So kind of a bummer there. It, it's very floppy, <laughs> I guess is the best way to describe it. So if it's sitting in your pocket, it might be, maybe it's because of that. Yeah, it's still, yeah, it's still pretty flimsy feeling though. I'm not gonna lie, uh, but hey, it's a cover. So it will protect your screen without having a, a screen protector on it, which is cool. And then the cutouts are deep enough to protect your cameras if it were to fall on the back. So all in all protection, I think this is really well made. It feels really good in the hand. It's got a nice textured uh, rubber feeling to it. It's with the Samsung branding. But again, the biggest downside to this is it's black and it's not see-through anything. So the color of your phone does not matter anymore, which is a bummer because I like this color. So kind of sucks. It gets covered up pretty easily by this case. But that is the flip view case. If you were looking for anything specific on that, uh, would I recommend buying it? I'd say... If you are a fan of flip style cases, this is a definitely a decent one. I'd say easily a seven out of 10. My only gripe for it is just this flimsy hinge. I just wish it had magnets so it didn't flip open by itself. Yeah, that's honestly my only issue with it. Everything else seems pretty good. So let's move on to the other case, the leather case. All right, so again, opening this case, we're gonna go from the bottom, cut that open. Looks about the same. It's going to have the documentation on the bottom, probably the case on the top. Yep. A little protected sleeve in there, but everything else is there. So we're going to put this to the side. So just like the flip cover case with this nice felt inside, I do really like that. I think that's really cool. And obviously it's going to protect your device pretty easily. But the back is leather. So I don't know if this is real leather. I really doubt it is. It looks pretty fake to me. 
but it feels good. I mean, it feels high quality. It's pretty steady or sturdy, I should say. Yeah, it's pretty rigid. It's not gonna, it's not very flexible, which is good. So it should be pretty good for protection. And the buttons are covered on this one as well, which is cool to see. Cut out for the mic, cut out for the cameras, all the cuts on the bottom you need, nothing on the left side. So pretty standard case. Oh yeah, yeah, I like the feeling of this one. This one was really good in the hand. So yeah, it doesn't add much bulk to it. As you can see, it doesn't have much of a lip though either. So with this case, I probably would still recommend getting some type of screen protector just because if it were to fall on its face, these lips, they are there. So if you just lay it on a table, it's not gonna hurt anything. But if it were to fall on concrete or something, you're still probably gonna hit the display, which would be a big bummer. Also because of these ridges, you can see it does come up a little bit onto the waterfall effect on both sides, which honestly, I, I don't mind that. I think that's actually fine. Because that's my biggest gripe with these newer phones. I've never liked the waterfall effects. I know some people disagree with me on that, but I just don't like it. It feels weird in the hand. So this adding that extra lip there actually feels nice. You're not going to accidentally press on the display. So that's definitely a plus. And then it looks like we do have pretty easy access to all our ports as well. Is it pretty easy to get the S Pen out still? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no problem at all getting the S Pen. And it does have that nice textured leather back, of course, for extra grip. And then it does have raised cutouts for the cameras so i'll try to get a close-up on this you can see that the cameras if my camera will focus the cameras are protected try to get it there we go so if it were to fall on its back the cameras will be totally fine so that's good to see on both the leather case and on the view flip case uh no issues there this is the personal case i would choose for my phone just because i don't like having to deal with a flip especially if you're using this in the car like if you mount it on the dash or something you don't have to worry about the, you know, flipping the thing around or whatever. And I'm a pop socket guy, so I will be installing this probably onto this case here. But yeah, it's just a big bummer that this, these cases cover up so much of the color of the phone. I, I understand it's really hard to get around that without making it a clear case, and those are pretty ugly. So yeah, just a bummer. I like seeing that cool blue color, but it is what it is. So Samsung, if you guys could make a sky blue version of this case, I will buy it. I don't care if this was free. I will purchase it because I want it. So <laughs> yeah, that's about it. So that is my unboxing and first impressions of the Galaxy S23 Ultra. Does it have many differences from the 22 Ultra? Not really. I would not recommend upgrading if you have the 22 Ultra. I did not. Again, I had the Fold 4, uh, which I loved, but I just never really ended up using the bigger inner screen that much. So uh, in my opinion, I felt this was a necessary upgrade just because I wanted to go back to a regular just big screen device and I like the S Pen and all that too. So yeah, all in all, it's an amazing device. I'm excited to get to use it for a few months and I'll be back with a full review in the near future. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If there's anything you wanna know specifically on the phone before you buy it, let me know. So yeah, with that, leave like share support as always. It truly helps the channel. I can't believe how much support you've been getting lately. It's been amazing. You guys are awesome. I hope you subscribe so you don't miss the next one. We'll hopefully see you in the next one. Peace out. Hey guys, Nick here once again. And I just wanted to pop in at the very end of the video to give a special shout out to my channel members. If you don't know what a channel member is, essentially these wonderful people are using their hard earned money to help keep the channel alive. So that's why I want to give a huge shout out to these guys because they're amazing. And if you want to become a member yourself, you can do it as easily just by clicking on a little join button below every single one of my uploads or just by going to my channel. There is four different tiers depending on how much you would like to support each month. And you can join for as little as $2 a month. And trust me, even if it's $2, it helps a ton and it adds up at the end of the month so that I can get more games for you guys to review or make retrospective videos on or to buy new technology such as new computer parts or really anything to keep the channel afloat and to make more content for you guys. So with that, I want to thank Kenneth Fellows, Hall Healers, Boltworks and Restoration, Wade Lady, Vinny Severman, and Thrasher to Black Stallion. You guys are all amazing and thank you so much for all the wonderful support. This channel is just growing and growing every single day and I can't wait to see where this channel leads us. So with that, have a wonderful day. We'll see you next time. Peace.